we've never seen this kind of frothiness around the housing market. Just hold tight with your opinions on the housing market until we see some things playing out. Hey, it's all coming to you with another video here. Uh, last week, I talked about the news CoreLogic came out about home price appreciation, where they think that's going to be. I've been looking at a lot of data on where the rents are going to be. What's going to happen in the next year? That's a good question. Now, I personally, and, and I've read a lot about this, I don't believe you can predict much further out than three or four quarters. So I'm just, when I talk about where the housing market's going to be, I'm really talking about what, what's going to do in the next few quarters, because beyond that, there's so many outcomes, so many things that could happen that you can't control. Um, I think prices are going to stay pretty strong. Is the appreciation rate going to go up like it is? I don't know. CoreLogic came out with that data and it, and it got a lot of interest online and a lot of people kind of glammed onto it talking about how housing is making a slowdown. I think it's going to have to slow down a lot more than what it is, but let's talk about forbearance and foreclosures and things like that because the guy who posts on, on Housing Wire that talks about the forbearance bros and I'll show that post and his name isn't coming to me right now, but I think it's Logan. But uh, it's interesting because forbearances have gone down below 3 million right now. So they're at about 2.7 million. This was a last month's data. So I, I assume it's going down more. What that means is that either these people are selling their houses or they're able to get themselves out of forbearance. And a lot of them, they're just starting making their payments and they're not even notifying the bank. They're just going on with their payments. That's a great thing. There has been some uptick in foreclosure starts and delinquencies, actually. I'm sorry, not foreclosure starts. Because if you look at the trend line, I'll post it here in foreclosures, it's going down. It's been going down for many years. The delinquencies, the 90 day plus delinquencies have been going up. But if you look at just the percentage they've gone up from before, you're talking about that increase. And this is how people play with the numbers a lot. Let's say delinquencies are up 50%. Well, if they were only at 1% and they're going up to 2%, looking at overall numbers, that isn't a lot. And now the, these are hypothetical numbers because I don't have them in front of me. My point is, is you have to really look at the data. If you're talking about something that's at an all time low, and yes, because of forbearance and the bank's not wanting to foreclose. And I think there's a bigger issue with some investment loans that if you can't kick out a tenant, why is the bank going to even try to foreclose on you? Those things do factor in in the foreclosures and only time will tell. But if you take all the foreclosures or all the delinquencies and you take even the forbearances and they all went into foreclosures, which is not going to happen, we would still be well, 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 well below what we were in 2008. So anybody who's thinking like, oh, there's a big housing crash coming, they need to rethink those. And just because some Something goes up, it must not come down. That is a fallacy that people talk about where they say prices are really up, they must go down. If you look at the 50 year trend line, we're right on with where, with where it should be. There's just been some ups and downs in between. And now we're getting into seasonality. And so you're going to start hearing, mark my words, you're going to start hearing that values have gone down. Values are going down. Well, they look at year over year, they look at month over month. You've got to look back a couple of months to really get the accurate numbers. Seasonality, when we're buying for funds, when we're working with funds, the best time to buy on MLS properties is coming up because you're getting into the holiday season. There are less properties on the market. You're going to see more of a discount. How the current environment factors into this excludes some of these large urban areas that are that are ever changing. And some people are moving out. Some people are going to be moving in. A little bit all over the place here. But my point is, take your time with the data. We've never seen this kind of frothiness around the housing market and around even investment properties. And that's something else that I've been talking about. Yields do have a floor. You can't keep going down. But the point is, is that we've got values that are going going crazy. I don't have the numbers here. I'm going to highlight this later, but we were just underwriting a portfolio. We had a seller that was going to sell last year that decided not to. And so we had all the values and numbers from last year to this year. You know, they've gone up 10% in some places in Florida. It's really interesting to see this on a micro level and it does affect the deals and transactions. So just hold tight with your opinions on the housing market until we see some things playing out. You know, everybody talks again about, for example, evictions, and we'll talk about that in another video, but comment, let me know what you think. Hopefully this wasn't too all over the place, but I appreciate your time. Thanks.